This is an image of Starship 39's nose cone as seen from the Star Factory, the ship that is expected to be the first Starship Block 3. One thing that's immediately noticeable is how clean and sleek it looks, really showing how SpaceX's welding techniques have evolved. They're most likely able to do something like this thanks to their laser welding robots. It's only in the past few years that SpaceX began harnessing the power of robotic laser welding, especially for crafting the primary and secondary airframe structures of the Starship's nose cone and payload bay. Robotic laser welding operates differently from traditional welding techniques, offering enhanced precision, speed, and flexibility. There are two primary types of laser welding, heat conduction welding and deep penetration, keyhole welding. Heat conduction laser welding is typically used for thin materials. In this method, the laser transfers energy through heat conduction, melting the material at the surface. The molten material quickly solidifies, creating a clean and sealed weld. This approach is ideal when minimal thermal distortion is required. Deep penetration laser welding, on the other hand, is suited for thicker materials. It works by forming a narrow, deep vapor cavity, commonly called a keyhole. As the laser moves, the keyhole travels along the welder path, allowing the beam to penetrate deeply into the material. The molten metal then solidifies behind the keyhole, forming a strong, continuous weld. Robotic laser welding offers several advantages over traditional welding methods. It produces exceptionally clean and precise welds with far fewer inconsistencies, even compared to conventional robotic welding systems. Thanks to the narrow and focused laser beam, it creates a smaller heat-affected zone, reducing the risk of distortion and making it ideal for delicate or heat-sensitive components. This method is also highly versatile and capable of welding a wide range of metal thicknesses. It can outperform traditional welding in terms of speed, repeatability, and accessibility. Unlike conventional welding tools that require close contact, laser welding robots can operate from a distance, sometimes more than a foot away from the workpiece. This makes it especially valuable in tight or hard-to-reach areas, where precision is crucial and accessibility is limited. Given its numerous advantages, robotic laser welding is the preferred solution for applications that demand accuracy, cleanliness, and minimal part deformation, from electronics and automotive components to medical devices and aerospace assemblies. It enables manufacturers to meet tight tolerances without compromising structural integrity. However, to actually achieve the shiny surface we see and to enhance the strength of each weld, an additional process is required beyond welding alone. When the stainless steel used in Starship is manufactured, it undergoes a method known as cold rolling. Cold rolling involves passing the metal through a series of rollers that compress and elongate the material, refining its grain structure. This process increases the strength and hardness of the steel. However, welding introduces significant heat to localized areas, which softens the metal and partially reverses the strengthening effects of cold rolling. To restore the material's hardness and improve the structural integrity of the welds, SpaceX employs a process called planishing. This involves using a large mechanical system to hammer and compress the welds until they match the hardness and uniformity of the surrounding metal. In addition to reinforcing the welds, planishing also smooths out the surface, giving Starship its polished, uniform appearance. Since completing its massive star factory, SpaceX has significantly accelerated its production capabilities by installing numerous welding robots and streamlining its assembly lines. According to the company, the 1 million square foot star factory brings many parts of the manufacturing process under one roof for the first time. Moving as much system integration work as possible earlier in the build process with the goal of eventually producing 1,000 starships per year. From external observation, SpaceX appears to be building up to Ship 40, which would correspond to approximately the 14th flight. However, this estimate is based only on visible activity and may not reflect the full scope of internal progress. Another unique welding technique SpaceX uses in Starship manufacturing is friction stir welding, or FSW. Although not a new technology, having been developed over 30 years ago, FSW remains widely adopted in modern engineering due to its ability to produce exceptionally strong and durable joints. Unlike traditional welding methods such as gas or arc welding, friction stir welding is a solid-state welding process. 
This means the materials being joined are not melted. Instead, a rotating tool generates frictional heat that softens the metal at the joint. The softened materials are then stirred together, allowing them to intermix and bond on a microscopic level. The result is a high-integrity weld with superior mechanical properties, including increased fatigue strength, stiffness, and minimal internal defects. FSW also offers several practical advantages. It reduces material waste, requires minimal surface finishing, and eliminates the release of toxic fumes, making it an environmentally friendly welding method. At SpaceX, FSW is specifically used to connect the breakoff fuel tanks on the Starship rocket. These tanks play a crucial role in propulsion. After the vehicle reaches space and begins orbital maneuvers, the decision to use FSW in this application was based on the need for extreme structural strength, something that traditional liquid-state welding or non-permanent methods such as rivets cannot adequately provide. Now, these advanced welding methods are impressive, especially as SpaceX aims to accelerate its manufacturing capabilities. However, what I'm curious about is, whether can these methods be used in space? Some may not be aware, but SpaceX has a concept for building a space station using its Starship. I won't go into too much detail, but basically, this plan would involve refurbishing and modifying the Starship once it has been launched into orbit. This, in turn, would require welding in space. Welding in space is not entirely unprecedented, but it remains a very rare occurrence. The first welds ever made in space were carried out by Soviet cosmonauts aboard Soyuz 6 in October 1969. This historic achievement took place during a joint mission with Soyuz 7 and Soyuz 8, marking the first time three crewed spacecraft were in orbit together simultaneously, carrying a total of seven cosmonauts. Officially, the mission aimed to test spacecraft systems and designs practice orbital maneuvers between spacecraft and conduct a series of scientific, technical, and biomedical experiments during group flight. However, the true objectives extended beyond these stated goals. The mission's primary, though unofficial, aim was to demonstrate the first simultaneous flight of three manned spacecraft and to perform vacuum welding in space. This was a significant step in evaluating the feasibility of assembling structures in orbit. Another major goal was to have Soyuz 7 and Soyuz 8 rendezvous and perform a docking maneuver, with Soyuz 6 capturing the event on film. Unfortunately, this mission really didn't go very smoothly. The exact cause of the failure remains unknown, though it's widely believed to be linked to helium pressurization issues. The Soyuz 7KOK spacecraft carried a torus-shaped housing at the rear for docking electronics, likely filled with helium to protect the equipment and meant to be jettisoned after docking to reduce re-entry mass. Temperature instability disrupted the quartz-controlled transmitter and receiver frequencies, leading to communication failures that ultimately prevented docking. The first vacuum welding in space was performed by Valery Kubasov aboard Soyuz 6 using a remotely controlled device known as the Vulcan Furnace, located inside the unpressurized orbital module. Three welding methods were tested during the mission. Electron beam welding, which uses high-velocity electrons to fuse metal surfaces. Low-pressure plasma arc welding, which relies on a constricted plasma arc controlled by a water-cooled nozzle and consumable electrode welding, a common arc welding technique where the electrode itself melts to form the weld. While the experiment marked a major technological milestone, it came with serious risks. The crew overestimated their capabilities and underestimated the danger. At one point, Kubasov nearly burned through the hull of the living compartment, an error that could have led to catastrophic depressurization, especially since the crew was not wearing spacesuits. Fortunately, despite the potential hazards, the results were quite positive. Of the three welding methods tested, electron beam welding proved to be the most successful. The weld quality was reported to be on par with, and in some cases indistinguishable from, welds performed on Earth. In addition to the welding experiments, several scientific and technical experiments were also performed. Welding in space was not attempted again until July 25, 1984, when cosmonauts Vladimir Janibekov and Svetlana Savitskaya conducted a spacewalk to perform metalwork in open space. Using the universal hand tool, a handheld electron beam gun, they spent three hours welding, brazing, coating, and cutting metal. 
The experiment successfully produced high-quality welds on stainless steel and titanium, further demonstrating the potential for in-space construction and repair. This marked the first and so far the only welds ever performed in open space. More than 40 years have passed since then. Is welding in space truly that challenging? The answer is yes, and for several good reasons. Space is a vacuum, completely devoid of atmospheric pressure. Traditional welding techniques on Earth often rely on shielding gases to protect the weld pool from contamination, a method that becomes incredibly difficult, if not impossible, in the vacuum of space. Moreover, Earth-based welding depends on gravity to control the flow of molten metal, manage slag formation, and regulate heat distribution. In microgravity, these processes become unpredictable, making it harder to achieve clean, defect-free welds. Temperature is another major challenge. Spacecraft are exposed to extreme thermal fluctuations, from the blistering heat of direct sunlight to the freezing cold of shadow. These shifts place welds under constant thermal stress, increasing the risk of cracks and material fatigue. Radiation is yet another hazard. Space is filled with cosmic rays and solar radiation, which can degrade materials, damage electronics, and threaten astronaut safety. Welding systems must be hardened against these effects, and proper shielding is essential. And then there's the dexterity factor. Performing precise welding tasks while wearing a bulky spacesuit with thick gloves and limited mobility is no small feat. Astronauts require extensive training and highly specialized tools to even approach the level of precision achievable on Earth. These challenges are not a reason to give up. They are a motivation to push forward. While astronauts have not yet performed welding in space themselves, we have successfully welded using robotic systems. One such experiment utilized electron beam welding, the same method first tested during the Soyuz 6 mission in 1969. Electron beam welding offers several key advantages. It is highly precise and capable of deep penetration into metal with minimal energy loss. And because it can only be performed in a high-quality vacuum, Space provides the perfect environment for it. Even more exciting, this system may be capable not only of welding, but also of cutting and even 3D printing in space. The entire experiment was conducted inside a cylindrical module about the size of a standard office water cooler. It housed a rotating carousel loaded with various aerospace-grade aluminum alloys, along with a second unit containing batteries to power the system and avionics for remote operation and data transmission. Sending astronauts outside the habitable zone to perform welding is inherently risky, so in the future, we'll likely rely heavily on machines for these kinds of tasks. Still, there will always be scenarios where human intervention is essential, and when that happens, the crew will play a critical role. But here's a question to think about. Do you train astronauts to become welders? Or do you take expert welders and train them to become astronauts? Drop your best guess in the comments.